This video is about the AC generator, also known as an alternator, which we'll explore with the help of a FET simulation. We already met an example of an electrical generator, the Faraday disk dynamo, in a previous video in this induction playlist. However, that was a DC or direct current generator, whereas here we'll be discussing an AC or alternating current generator. As I explained in the intro video of this playlist and onwards, a broken electromagnetic induction up into three different types. The AC generator is an example of type 2, flux changes in a loop. To follow this video and get the most out of it, you need to be familiar with magnetic flux and Faraday's law. So if you aren't, I recommend you familiarize yourself with these concepts from the playlist before returning to this video. Let's now take a look at the simulation. What we have here is a loop of wire connected to a lamp bar magnet attached to a wheel, and a water tap. When I move this slider, water will fall from the tap and spin the wheel and magnet. Before I turn the tap on, let me point out that typically for A-level physics, the AC generator is presented as a fixed magnet and a rotating coil of wire which continuously cuts field lines. We'll be covering that scenario later on in the playlist when we discuss the third type of induction. For now, just be aware that there is no cutting of field lines in this video, and that even though what we'll be discussing here might look a bit different to what you're seeing at school or elsewhere, the essence of the physics, for example the formulas to be discussed, is identical. Turning the tap on, you can see that the bulb glows on and off. What's going on here? The magnet, of course, gives rise to a magnetic field around it. As the magnet rotates, the magnetic field lines inside the loop rotate as well. You can see this more clearly with this compass inside the loop. What this means is that the magnetic flux through the loop is changing continuously with time. From Faraday's law of induction, we know that the changing magnetic flux gives rise to an induced EMF, causing an induced current to flow in the circuit, which lights up the bulb. What we're seeing right now, though, isn't even the whole story. If we check out the motion of the electrons in the loop, we see that they periodically change their direction of travel. In other words, we have here an oscillating or alternating current. This is why this generator and its relatives are known as AC or alternating current generators. What factors affect how brightly the lamp glows and the size of the maximum current? There are four factors. Pause the video and see if you can figure out what they are. The four factors are the magnetic field strength, the area of the loop, the number of turns of wire in the coil and the speed or frequency at which the magnet rotates. Increasing each of these factors leads to a greater maximum induced EMF, resulting in a greater maximum induced current, which leads to the bulb glowing more brightly, as you've just seen. These four factors may seem familiar to those of you who have seen a previous video in the playlist flux changes in a loop. Our next task is to figure out why exactly these four factors are relevant and to learn more about the oscillating induced EMF. For this, we'll need some maths to model what we've been looking at. Even if your specification doesn't mention any formulas for the AC generator, e.g. if you're doing Edexcel or OCRA, a bit of maths is super helpful to gain a deeper understanding of the physics. Let's call the area of the loop A and the number of turns of wire N as usual. There are magnetic field lines poking through the loop and we'll assume that the magnetic flux density is uniform with magnitude B. Recall from the simulation that as the magnet rotates, the field lines through the loop rotate as well. Let's call the angular speed or frequency of this rotation omega. As the field lines rotate, the angle they make relative to the normal line, theta, will of course change. If we say that at the start, t equals zero, the field lines are parallel to the normal, 
so that theta is equal to zero, then at time t, the angle is simply given by omega t. Hopefully you should be familiar with this from circular motion. With all of this in place, it's quite simple to get an expression for the flux linkage through the loop. Recall that this is simply n times the magnetic flux through the loop, and that the magnetic flux is given by b cosine theta a. Using theta equals omega t, the flux linkage through the loop at time t is simply nb cosine omega t times a. Now that we've established this, we can use Faraday's law of induction to figure out the induced EMF. The rate of change of flux linkage can be gotten by differentiating the flux linkage with respect to time. Don't worry if you don't know about differentiation. All you need to know for our purposes here is that this equals nba omega sine omega t. This formula for the induced EMF tells us how the induced EMF in the coil changes with time. Before we look at the graph of this, let's summarize what we've found. Note that it's convenient to call the product of four factors, nba omega, epsilon zero or epsilon naught. If we plot the graph, it's just a sine graph. Since a sine graph repeats periodically and alternates between positive and negative values, this explains the alternating current that we saw in the simulation. The maximum or peak induced EMF, epsilon naught, is equal to nba omega. This is a product of the four factors that we identified in the simulation as affecting the brightness of the bulb and the maximum induced current that flows. So we've now theoretically justified the relevance of these four factors, along with quantifying their effect, which is cool. Epsilon naught, or zero, is proportional to each of the four factors, so doubling any of them, for example, doubles the peak EMF. We gain further insight into the AC generator if we plot the graph of flux linkage versus time directly below the graph for the induced EMF. Let's also draw in some pictures of the field lines and loop at select times. The important thing to note here is that when the flux linkage is a maximum or minimum, as shown by the purple points, the induced EMF is zero, again shown by purple points. This is because the gradient or the rate of change of flux linkage is zero. And since Faraday's law tells us that the induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage, the EMF is zero at these times. On the other hand, when flux linkage is zero, shown in pink points, the magnitude of the EMF is a maximum, again shown in pink. At these times, the gradient of flux linkage is a maximum positive or negative value, which by Faraday's law leads to either a maximum or a minimum in the induced EMF. A common misconception is to think that the induced EMF will hit its peak values when the flux linkage is at its peak values. You can steer clear of this misconception by remembering that it's the gradient of the flux linkage versus time graph that determines the induced EMF, as expressed in Faraday's law. To finish, let's return to the simulation to discuss one last thing. A generator is a device which generates electricity via induction. The AC generator here is converting the kinetic energy of the rotating wheel and magnet into electrical energy in the form of alternating current. And we know that Lenz's law is intimately related to energy transfers in induction. Using Lenz's law, can you explain why the current alternates here? Leave your answer as a comment, and I'll post the answer as a comment in due course. I'm grateful for FET for their excellent simulation that I've used in this video. I'll leave a link for it uh, in the description and recommend you check it out to have a play around with it and enhance your understanding. Thanks for watching. Please give a like and subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. And uh, take care and I hope to see you soon.